New research suggests that glyphosate seriously harms bumblebees. Bumblebees exposed to glyphosate fail to recognize threats. New research shows. What's more, the researchers also noted a reduced sensitivity to ultraviolet radiation, which could potentially affect their navigational abilities and thus their foraging efficiency. Glyphosate is the key ingredient in Roundup which in turn is the most popular herbicide in the world. Many previous studies have suggested that this agent affects the condition of pollinators. In a new analysis, Researchers at the University of Constance in Germany looked at bumblebees exposed to long-term glyphosate exposure. They showed that such insects are unable to associate a potential threat, aversive stimulus, with a visual stimulus, and this ability is a basic condition for survival. The research was published in the journal Science of the Total Environment. What impact are agrochemicals having on the ongoing global decline in insect numbers? The answer to this question guided German researchers. Because glyphosate attacks the important EPSPS enzyme found in plants and microorganisms, but not animals. It has long been assumed that the agent is not toxic to animals, humans and bees. However, some research shows that this is not the case. With the global decline in insect numbers proceeding at an alarming rate, we need to investigate the impact of agrochemicals in more detail. Going beyond simply assessing mortality rates, says Nuvian of the University of Constance. Nuvian together with Anya Weidenmuller and James J. Foster, studied the effects of long-term exposure to glyphosate in bumblebees, particularly on their ability to learn and move in response to light. In their analyses, the biologists studied over 400 bee workers. They showed that bumblebees chronically exposed to glyphosate are unable to associate a potential threat, aversive stimulus, with a visual stimulus. As far as we know, they don't study at all anymore, says Nuvian. In contrast, a control group of bumblebees that were not exposed to glyphosate showed good learning abilities. The ability to associate a noxious stimulus with specific cues is essential for survival, adds Nuvian. 
Thanks to this adaptive behavior, animals are more likely to avoid contact with poisons, predators and parasites. This is why the learning impairments we have shown caused by glyphosate exposure can significantly increase pollinator mortality. Such a depletion of manpower will have an obvious impact on the success of the colony. Although this has yet to be confirmed experimentally, says Nuvian. In the locomotion and phototaxis experiments, glyphosate exposure slightly reduced the speed of movement of the bumblebees but left movement in response to light stimuli largely unaffected. However, scientists noticed a change in the response of bumblebees to ultraviolet radiation. The study authors warn that even a small change in UV sensitivity could have wide-ranging implications for these pollinators, potentially affecting their navigation and foraging efficiency. The cuttlefish passed a test designed to test children's cognitive abilities. New research has revealed there's more going on in the strange brains of cuttlefish than we thought. It turns out that these animals are willing to give up the meal they have on hand when they know that waiting means a much tastier reward. This ability to delay gratification demonstrates cognitive abilities, such as planning, that are unlikely to be expected in a cephalopod. According to scientists, the ability to learn and adapt evolved in cuttlefish in the depths of the marine world to give the animals an advantage over predators. The team's research was published in Proceedings of the Royal Society B. The ability to delay gratification demonstrates cognitive skills such as planning for the future. The test that the cuttlefish were subjected to, commonly known as the marshmallow test, was developed to study how the human mind develops and at what age a person is smart enough to delay gratification when he or she may later get a greater benefit. A test conducted in the 1960s by Professor Walter Mischel of Stanford University consists of presenting children with a proposition. Either eat something delicious now. In the original test it was sweet marshmallow, but it could also be chocolate or a cookie, and in the case of cuttlefish, shrimp. Or wait a while and then they'll get more treats. Because the test is very simple, it was possible to adapt it to animals. Of course, there is no way to tell an animal that it will receive a reward if it waits. However, they can be trained to understand that they will get better food if they don't eat what's in front of them right away. Some primates, dogs and ravens have undergone a similar test. 
cuttlefish. Sepia officinalis was studied last year. It turned out that animals can refrain from eating a morning meal of crab meat when they discover that for dinner they will eat something they like much more, shrimp. A team led by Alexander Schnell from the University of Cambridge found that animals have the capacity for self-control and learning. Further studies were designed to confirm the results. The cuttlefish were placed in a special tank with two chambers containing snacks. One contains a piece of raw shrimp, and the other contains live shrimp, which cuttlefish like much more. There were also symbols on the doors of the chambers that the cuttlefish had learned to recognize. The circle meant the door would open immediately. The triangle meant it would open after a certain amount of time, and the square meant it would stay locked. During the tests, the dead shrimp was placed in a chamber behind an open door. While the door behind which the live shrimp was located was only opened after a certain period of time. If the cuttlefish reached for a dead shrimp, the live treat was immediately removed. The researchers found that all of the cuttlefish in the study chose to wait for their preferred food, live shrimp. The cuttlefish were able to wait for a better reward which is comparable to the achievements of vertebrates with much larger brains, says Schnell. The second part of the experiment was designed to see how well the cuttlefish could learn. The animals were shown two squares of different colors. Choosing the right one meant being rewarded with food. It turns out that cuttlefish have learned to adapt to the situation. Researchers do not know how similar abilities in animals living deep in the ocean come from. It's possible that the ability to delay gratification may have something to do with how cuttlefish forage for food. The cuttlefish spend most of their time camouflaged, waiting for prey, says Schnell. They only move when they are feeding, but then they are vulnerable to predators. It is possible that delayed gratification may have evolved as a byproduct. Cuttlefish have learned to simply wait for better quality food.